and thank you guys so much for joining us today. My name is Kathy Fillion, and on this Make It With Mod Podge, we're gonna be upcycling old food containers into these beautiful containers for holding our homemade bath salts. So Steve's gonna teach you how to make this massive transformation from an old spaghetti jar and old mayonnaise jar with napkins and Mod Podge into these beautiful containers. Steve, you ready to do it? Thanks, Kat, and yes, I am so ready to do this. First, though, I'm using this spaghetti jar, and it still kind of smells. I washed it with soap and water, and it still smells a little bit. So a good tip is lemon. Lemon is great. Just rub some lemon in there, some lemon juice, wash it out again. It's a great disinfectant, and it should get that stink out. Also, I'm going to take off these labels. Now some jars have really easy labels that come off just with soap and water. They'll peel right off very easily, but some are super, super stubborn. So a great way to do that is just fill up your sink or you can get a bucket with some soap and water and let those soak overnight. In the morning, they should peel right on up. Very easy. Well, are you guys ready to get started with this? Because I am. Let's get Mod Podging. Okay guys, so let's get started. I first want to show you some of the napkins that we've used. You can see there's such a variety that you can use. So many great napkins out there that you can use. And you know, what we've done with them, they can go over any container. Napkins are a great way to decoupage on top of containers. Look at this one here. A little bow here. It's just a quick little decoupage around containers mayonnaise jars, mason jars, spaghetti jars, all different kind of jars. So there we have, it. there's some of the um, jars that we have done and I'm gonna be using today that napkin right there. Love the blues, love the colors, love the white. Um, and I washed out my spaghetti jar, like I said, here it is, nice and clean. I used lemon, soap and water, no more smell. Um, and that's just a great way to clean it. Um, again, it depends what kind of jar you're, you know, you're using. Lemon is just a great disinfectant and gets that smell out. So to begin with the Mod Podging, what you're gonna wanna do is pick your napkin. I'm using this napkin here. And if there is a two ply, three ply, you want to take that off. This one is already done. And then what you wanna do is you wanna make sure and measure just by eye, make sure your top portion right up here. Let me see, let me move this down a little bit. I'm working blindly a little bit with this camera. You wanna make sure that it fits and you want some extra on the bottom here so that can fold on over to give it a nice finish. But what you also wanna do is make sure that it wraps all the way around like so. Now I have a lot of extra here. You don't want that because that's gonna double it up and that's not gonna look so great. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna give it probably about a half inch. And again, that's just an eyeball. Like so, it goes all the way around, not too much extra. And I'm just gonna cut that off. There we go. So it's not doubled up because it will kind of show a little bit. It'll bulk up a little. Okay, so now that I've got that done, the next thing I'm gonna do is I want to paint my jar because I don't want that to, um, you, I want a base, I want a base coat and I love using the home decor chalk. Now this paint is amazing. It gives you a nice, Full coverage, it's, I'm gonna just show it to you. I'm gonna stop talking and show it to you. You can see it's nice and thick and it goes on super, super thick and almost like one coat is all you're going to need. You're gonna paint that all the way around. This is gonna be your base coat. Now this comes in different colors also, the chalk paint, so you might wanna take a look at that because you can use different colors if you'd like against different napkins. I'm using white, keeping it simple. You're gonna paint the whole entire thing all the way up to here. 
Okay, so you can see that. I just wanted to show you the chalk paint because it's beautiful. Even if you're not decoupaging on top of it, I have one done right over here. I'm just gonna show that to you because it's so beautiful even without decoupaging on top. It's just a great, great paint. And I love using it for a lot of different projects. I use it for base coating. I also use it just for um, different types of projects. Okay, now that we have this paint, I let this dry for about, oh, I don't know, what was it, 45 minutes. Um, dries fairly quick. And then I'm going to, ta-da, we're going to Mod Podge. We're going to use our gloss Mod Podge on top of my spaghetti jar that has been cleaned, that has been chalk painted on top of for the base coat. And I'm gonna put my Mod Podge directly on top of all that. So you're just gonna take your Mod Podge and you wanna go over the entire jar, whatever you're using, even the bottom. You just need a nice coat. Just make sure you're covering everything. Go right on top. I'm using the gloss. Again, if you have matte at home, if you have satin at home, those work great also. You're gonna cover your whole entire jar. Let's go around the rim here because I'm gonna be covering over this, over where the lid screws on. It's fine, it gives it a nice finish. Your lid can st still screw right on down there. It's not gonna give it any type of blockage or anything. You just wanna make sure you get that Mod Podge over your whole entire jar. Okay, now, Let's get my piece of paper, piece of paper. Let's get my napkin. I'm gonna take the napkin and I like to put it kind of right in the center there, making sure that my lid right up here, if you guys can see that, let me move on down a little bit. It's gonna hit right on top, leaving extra at the bottom. I'm gonna show that to you in just a minute. Let me just fold this over. And I'm gonna be able to show that to you guys. We're gonna go right on over that way. Okay, so there we have it. So there it is, and then you're just gonna go right on top and you're going to start moving this napkin around, just like so with a, with a nice top coat and you can use your brush, you can see that finish, you can see that going right in there, you see those grooves? It just goes, falls right into place Wherever your brush is gonna go, I'm adding a little bit more Mod Podge right on top of that. And look, and then I'm gonna just fold that over to give it a nice finish. Okay, I'm gonna say stick. I like to start working at the top just to get that rim part finished. Here we go. Okay. Let's just go over the top so you can see that right there. Look at how nice that looks. Nice and finished. Very pretty. And then I'm slowly gonna work my way down. Down over on top of the whole base of the jar. Now you can see that because I had the Mod Podge already down, it has, it has grabbed. You can even see right in there, you can see those letters that were on the jar. You're just gonna gently do a nice coat right on top of that. You don't need too much of that because you definitely, certainly do not want this to tear. So just be kind of gentle at this point in doing it. And you can see it really kind of takes on its own little shape there without me doing much to it. Now, remember when I told you to leave some at the bottom, the reason why? Let's add a little bit more Mod Podge right there. And I like to just flip that over just to finish that off. Just like that. Hope you guys can see that. Sometimes I'm having this new camera deal. I'm working blindly, I can't see you guys, but I think I'm doing okay. I hope I'm doing okay. Am I doing okay? <laughs> okay. Um, so there we have it, it's finished off nicely. 
Now you can see you can add a little more Mod Podge wherever there's areas that you might see that are sticking up or something. You just wanna go right back on over. And add a little bit more and go all the way around and make sure you have it done. Look at how pretty that is. There you go. Now you're gonna set that aside to dry. Oh, let's get this little area down, see? You wanna make sure you go all the way around. And those wrinkles, you know, those wrinkles are part of it. But you can push some of those down if you get any little bulbous areas. Just use your brush and press all that down. Okay, there we have it. Now you're gonna wanna let this dry. Oh, you know what? If you can let it dry overnight, that'd be great. But you don't have to. You can let this dry for a couple hours um, and then move on to your next steps. So there we have it. That's Mod Podging on top of a spaghetti jar with a napkin. While my jar is still drying, Kathy is gonna show you how to make some amazing homemade bath salts, and they smell so good. Now I wanna show you two different types of homemade bath salts that you can make. We're gonna make one that's a rose bath salt and one that is a rosemary and lavender bath salt. Now this year I had an amazing luck with all of my roses blooming already. They were so gorgeous, so I harvested them, and I have dried out their rose petals. And you can see here, I've got some still drying. I've got a whole bunch of different colors drying there. I've also got some dried rosemary and some dried lavender. Now these are all things that you can get from your own garden or from um, a friend's garden. These are great gifts too, for mom or friends, girlfriends, neighbors, anyone who wants a little pick-me-up. So the first one I wanna show you is our rose petal one. So these are my rose petals that I harvested and I'm gonna go ahead and just give them a chop. You can chop them with scissors. I happen to have one of these little curved knives, so these work pretty good. Just chop them up. And you're really just trying to get some nice sized pieces that can float around. Just give them a chop, chop, chop. And we're gonna add these to Epsom salt. And this is our just plain Epsom salt here. And you can buy Epsom salt at the grocery store, you can buy it online. Uh, many, many people use it for soaking in the bath. We're just gonna add our rose petals to the Epsom salt. And you can do them, I wanna show you here, I've got what I call like rose petal dust. You could do it light like that, you could really chop it up, but I like these big chunky ones. And then we're gonna mix those in, just like so. And now I'm gonna add a little bit of oil. So this is a rose essential oil. You can add any kind of oil that you want. You just wanna make sure that it is essential oils or kind for the body and bath. So I like a lot, so I added about 12 drops there. And now just mix that in. Continue to mix it. like so. Again, if you wanted finer rose petals, you just chop them finer, but I really like the look, and especially I like these big ones floating around in the tub. And once that is done, you are all ready. Let's see if I can spoon it in very good. <laughs> I'm doing this not looking. To spoon it into your jar. Normally I would fill that all the way up. And boom, you got yourself some rose petal bath salt, but that's simple. You really just have those three ingredients. So next time you get some roses from somebody or something, harvest those up. It's so fun in the bathtub to have them floating around. I want to show you another one really fast. I've got the same Epsom salt here. And in this bowl, I have dried out rosemary and lavender. And for the lavender, you just want to pick apart, just kind of break it up, break it up in your hands, just like that. Just keep adding. Just kind of really break it up and get those oils moving around. And just dump the rest of that in there. And now for this one, I'm going to add some lavender and rosemary essential oil. About seven drops. This stuff's pretty strong. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Well, that was kind of a, <laughs> I got a bit of a heavier one there. And 
same deal. Just mix that up real good. There you go. It's that simple. And now this mixture, this is the rosemary and lavender bath salt, is ready to just be funneled into the container of your choice. And let's talk about the different containers that we so Steve showed you how to decorate your container using a napkin, and now I wanna show you some of the ways that we finished them off. This started out as a mayonnaise jar, and we used that blue china napkin on there. And for this one, we just did a little bit of ribbon. I love that little gold dot right around the edge. Super simple to do. This was our floral napkin, and for this, I just added a little bit of glitter paper to the top, and then just added a fun little um, flower right there, just a satin flower. This was a mason jar. This is one of my favorites. This was um, Jif peanut butter, and I love that wild napkin on there. Just a little bit of trim, just glued a little trim to that edge there. You can go wild. You can add whatever you want to these. This one is a very sweet little simple one. Just added a little flower there and a little tiny uh, ribbon, little polka dot ribbon. So whatever kind of little bits and baubles you have, those are good. If you have a boring lid, you could glitter the whole lid like we did here. We just matched our glitter color the best we could to our napkin print and added that glitter right on the top. To add the glitter, we just uh, used gloss Mod Podge, just glossed it on and sprinkled the glitter on and sealed that glitter with that. And this is one of my favorite transformations because this is an applesauce jar and it's got all these funny shapes, but you know what, who cares? It looks cool, it's got a built-in handle for dumping out your bath salts. It works really good for that. For this one, we just added a little bit of a raffia tie on the top, and I painted over the top of that with some green multi-purpose full cart paint just to cover up that logo. So you can really get creative with the things that you have and take a look at some of these containers and think, hmm, what can I do with these? Not only are these great for bath salts, but these are great for organizing other things in your house, in your pantry, in your craft room. You can use them to do cotton balls, whatever you want. Just remember, next time you see one of those pretty, pretty napkins and you've got an empty container, you can create something really cool with just a little bit of Mod Podge. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. Please drop us a line if you have any questions. We wanna see what you're making, so be sure to use the hashtag Mod Podge and Plaid Crafts, and we will see you this weekend for the weekend watch party, and have a great week. See you next Thursday, bye. Bye everybody, and thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next Thursday.